Tchaikovsky wrote his children's opera in order to introduce young aspiring pianists to the wonders and intricacies of the romantic style, especially of the so-called Russian school of piano playing, with its endless variety of touches, articulations, and tone colors. Each of the 24 little gems inspire an interpretation that is expressive but also has very finely drawn characters and moods. In this series of videos, I will consider each of the little pieces in turn and discuss their technical and interpretive problems and offer solutions. If you are interested in the fascinating but difficult history of the writing of the children's opera, Please watch my video entitled Tchaikovsky's Children's Album, The Light of a Dark Soul. Children's Album opens with the beautiful morning prayer, a piece that's very calm and meditative and filled with challenges and difficulty. Challenge number one here occurs at the very start as we start with chords. <laughs> that are not played exactly together, exactly simultaneously. This is difficult. Our fingers are all different lengths and one is attached to the hand at a different angle. So getting them to go together at the exact same time is not an easy task at all. For a few very lucky pianists, if they just think I'm going to play this together and what I just did was not good, but this is good, their brain just adjusts automatically. This is wonderful. All they have to do is to listen to themselves carefully. For other people, hard as they listen, problems remain. So we have to consider the physical ways of playing hands together. There are basically two things to think about. The first thing is, if you play from the very surface of the key, you have a much better chance of um, bringing the keys down at the same time. Much more so if you do something from the air, where each finger moves from its own height and its own pace. So that is not likely to work. The second thing to consider is even if you are already on the key, if all the fingers bend in different places and in different ways, once again, you cannot get them to be simultaneous. So what you have to do is think about the entire hand from the elbow all the way to the fingertip being just one machine, one instrument. And here we go. But this only solves half of our problem. The melody in this piece is contained in the upper notes of the chords. So if you play chords any which way, exactly 100% together, the chord still sounds beautifully voiced. So, two for one. Excellent. Fantastic. So, let's move on to the next problem that most pianists experience in this, and that is that the long notes are never long enough. absolutely nothing and we want to get moving and then the rhythm is wrong. So what is the solution? Well standard solution is to well count one and two and three and the problem is however that you can't do that in performance. I mean you can't say it, you shouldn't be mouthing the words either and you certainly cannot do any kind of tapping with your foot or uh, blinking or whatever other gesture you want to do. So the solution to this is to subdivide the notes in your mind into the constituent eighth notes, something like this. Etc. A 
at the very least, it gives your mind something to do. But did you notice that the result wasn't very nice? Why? Because my pulses were very metronomical. Now, we judge time by our own heartbeat. And our own heartbeat is actually much less regular than people think. When the heart rate is exactly, exactly regular, it means the machine is doing it, and that's just not good. Now, we do not want rapid heartbeats. We don't want uh, any of these things that land people in the emergency room. But in the normal course of things, our heart rate gets a little bit faster when we get excited. And then it slows down again when we relax. So this is what we want to create here. Some sort of gentle micro-timing, but that is pulsed through every eighth note. So the changes in our tempo or our rubata is gradual, gentle, and natural sounding. Something like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit for effect, but do you hear how beautiful the result is? How alive, how song-like. So now I'm going to pause in my mind rather than on the piano. Wasn't that that, right? Very beautiful. And not a difficult thing to do and useful in so many pieces. One more item of interest in this piece is the repeated notes which happen in the second half, in the left hand. here as heartbeats, we are in the emergency room again, aren't we? So instead, let's consider how to really play these notes effectively. And the solution is not only to remain attached to the key, never leave the surface, piano, which is a marvel, there is that special point inside the key called the double escapement from which you can play the note again without lifting the key all the way. Amazing, isn't it? You have to find it. Uh, this way, Without, even without pedal, we're creating this wonderful feeling of a drone or a buzz. Really marvelous. You can only do this, of course, if you are practicing on an acoustic piano. If you're playing on an electric, then your job is to just stay at the surface of the key and be as close to the key as possible. You can still make it a very beautiful I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comments. And I will see you next time for piece number two, Winter Morning. Happy practicing.